You know, guys, the basic architecture of the web as we know it is quite simple. And you might argue it's actually elegant and beautiful if you actually look at it it's at its core. But unfortunately, we need, as we add more features to both the web as it's a client, the browser mainly, and the web server, which are the feeder, if you will, of the content. Uh, complexity arises, problems arise as a result. One problem that you might be familiar with is you visit a web page and you get certain layout, and after a fraction of a second, that layout started to kind of jiggle and shift, you know? And, and the reason... If you're a front-end developer, you you have the answer. You know why, right? It says, hey, I loaded the HTML first. I made a request. I got the first thing that the server responded to me with is the HTML, and I rendered whatever I can render, right? So the text will show up, right? Paragraphs, if there is like dev element, they will show up, but we're still waiting for a lot of other things the browser sometimes start to be smart and not to load things that depends on certain things but sometimes you see it so the dependencies here like css files javascript if you have code that shifts your layout around and as a result once you get the html all these references are then turned around and requested on the same connection that you requested the HTML on, or, right, it depends on the protocol, HTTP 1 or 2, multiple connections can be open and all these requests are sent at the same time. Okay? And HTTP 1, you have a limit of six connections. I think Chrome created this arbitrary limit, and you can only send, send six requests at a time. And just you have to wait. Each connection has a request. In HTTP 2, we basically have no limit. I believe there is an artificial 200 limits uh, per connection, right, for each stream. But that's enough. That's more than enough, right? So you can use this and send it in parallel. Regardless, but the question here is, yeah, you sent, you have seven images and you have five CSS files and three JavaScript files, right? And you made all these requests at the same time. And even... If you try to be smart, it says, okay, I'm going to send the JavaScript first because I need them first. And I'm going to send the CSS in the second because I need those. And the images are not important, so I'm going to add them, request them at the, at the end. The way you request doesn't matter, right? Because at the end of the day, these requests technically have no priority or anything like that. They will all, assuming you didn't actually physically delay them, but you just change the order of what the request you sent all of these requests will be of the server and the server will respond as fast as possible to any of them so if the images were happened to be cached by a front end content management content uh, delivery network or a reverse proxy or some sort th those images will be served first and the CSS will be delayed. Right? It's just whatever is available, just serve it. That's that's how it works today. Right? The problem here is because we don't have this guarantee, then we have this the 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 dependency tree is broken in our page, and the experience of the user is hindered. So that's one user case use case, right? So like where you can actually there's a problem where we want to set some sort of priority right and the request which doesn't exist today you might argue that you can fictitiously create this priority by literally just delaying sending those requests don't send the images the images are not as important as the javascript files or css right just don't send them right uh well technically you don't have that the browser do, does, but not you as a front-end developer. But if you're building an app, you get my point, right? Another control you have 
is to build so many files and and a lot of uh, the I, I follow the this channel the Chrome developers channel and uh, they have good suggestions right? I, I don't write front end code but as as often but but it, it's it's very nice the 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 depth of knowledge they go into discussing how the browser works and what what the browser decides to load first you know based on like what 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 synchronous requests are blocking what others are not like the browsers does so much complex things to be, uh, you know to give the user the best user experience effectively and but yes yeah, though some some of these requirements some of these um, you know tips they say use inline css instead of a css file why because the inline css will arrive with your html file and because it will arrive with your html file based on the what you see what you get principle the browser has it and it doesn't have to turn around and make a request to fetch that resource right same thing with javascript with javascript is, i think it's a bad idea to use inline javascripts right uh just because i mean uh, the reason i don't like the inline script and i try to disable them with the content security policy is is because i want to get rid of uh, uh, cross-site scripting because that's one of the most nastiest you know security attack right and if and most of these are because of inline scripts right the script tag script and then you close the script tag right so what you do is you host your javascript files um on a specific domain that is trusted and your page instructed not to load any javascript file from anywhere except this domain which is your domain and just because you have that that is an additional uh, layer of security there, so that nobody can just do like in an input text like inject the javascript in your code in your page and then act on your behalf effectively that's just one of the nastiest thing right but I, but i understand sometimes it's not always possible to disable this because you, you need you need certain the, there is always a reason right i i i try not to tell people what's best anymore because you know i i came to the comfort with myself that i don't know everything you know whatever i say could possibly be wrong so telling people that oh you should always do this and not never do this that's bs because like what do you know you are an outsider you're an armchair architect literally just spewing stuff on people you don't know their use case you don't know anything about how many years they've been working on this code you don't know anything so you can't just tell people say oh drop everything this is the way to go so i believe i always believe that there is a special use case for everything right and understanding the risks is what matters i know we're going all over the place there is there is a point of of this back in engineering show actually uh we're gonna get to it there's an rfc i want to discuss we can't always set you know solve the problem of priority responses you know and here's another problem when you even if you somehow hard-coded the responses on your servers like you own the web server you own the back end and you always going to configure your back end to respond with css javascript and then images and then other un unimportant files like whatever and 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 guys you can gen generalize this you can go into apis their uh, apis also can request can have priorities like this api is more important than this api so please res if i send you two requests respond with this first before this if I, if you can right if applicable i think it's just generalized i'm giving the html 
JavaScript, CSS, because it's a kind of common, common example, right? So you can configure your backend to respond with whatever priority you feel best, right? Will that work? Sure. It will, but it's kind of, it's kind of nasty to code, right? I think like, it's like, what if you want to spin up multiple servers and like, like having special logic, what could go wrong? Right. Uh, so that's one problem. I, I'm not worried much about that, but the second problem is what if, what about, <laughs> uh, intermediaries, right? Things that are in the middle. What if there is a CDN between you, right? And the client, the client and the backend. And if you have a CDN, the CDN is a layer seven TLS terminator, always, you know, uh, reverse proxy. That means it reads all the requests. It terminates all the requests, reads them, decrypt them, understand them, serve the client's certificate, and then turns around and then request, make these requests on another connection to the actual backend. If it doesn't have the answer cached, even if you or backend obeyed the, that priority that you kind of hard coded in your app, right? The CDN or the reverse proxies will have no clue about them. If you receive all the responses, if you respond to the reverse proxies, the reverse proxy will follow whatever is whatever is applicable for it, right? So if there is like a delay in the first request for first response for some reason, like a segment was lost and it was to retransmitted, but the rest of them of the request responses went normally, then it will say, hey, whatever is available for me, I will respond with this. Maybe right uh, maybe there is some sort of um, memory contention and uh, maybe th there is a certain logic that the responses are being asserted maybe maybe the 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 reverse proxy will decide oh i actually this is the first request so i must serve this request first and this request maybe happened to be the image and no you don't want to serve the image first i want to serve the css right but but you can't control any of that so People from Cloudflare and Fastly uh, came together and built a, a very interesting, uh, yeah, let's, let's just talk through this screen. Yeah. Yeah. So this is it, an RFC. So this was uh, designed actually very fresh. You know, it's June 2022. It's like literally this month has been proposed the standard, I think. Right. And it was basically designed by Lucas do he's from cloudflare and uh he he's also i think in the board of the http3 and quick and mask and so many other stuff right and and oko kazo oko he's from fastly and yeah uh, those are two badasses engineers you know they're so you know uh, i like following them and just learning so much from the depth of the, you know, the, they are into the trenches building this stuff, you know, the building something like this is, and taking care of the proxies and, you know, the connect method. What if I am a, in a proxy, not the reverse proxy, an actual proxy? What does that mean? Taking care of all of this stuff, right? So this is basically the, the RFC. I'm not going to go through it, obviously, right? But it, it just just, just uh, kind of summarize, read the abstract, and and then talk talk through it with you guys a little bit. So this is a request for comment 9218. Uh, again, uh, Lucas Perdue and Oko from Fastly, June 2022, fresh again. Uh, it's named Extensible Priority prioritization scheme for HTTP. I butchered the heck out of that. Extensible prioritization scheme for HTTP. Okay. So this is basically introducing a new header, HTTP header, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I, I skimmed through the RFC and okay. uh, read the main main points and that's what it, I basically got. And it's, it is 
a complex one in my opinion to implement right this document describes a scheme that allows an http client to communicate its preferences for how the upstream server prioritizes responses to its request so the client here you know tells the server hey i want this request to be served before this not in the order they are essentially received why because the order you sent them the request are not guaranteed to be received in that order to begin with there's this thing that is called tcp head of line blocking there is packets that get lost you know and and i'm talking about all you know all the protocols you might say i say oh HTTP 3 fixed the tcp head of line block yeah it did but that, that doesn't mean it uses udp so udp still can be lost and retransmitted so one stream one request even if you send request one before request two request two might arrive to the server before request one what do i mean by arrive you know we we really don't talk in much technical details as we should as software engineer if i sent a request that is get path let's say just slash app and then http slash one one the fact that i sent that and i sent a bunch of hitters and then buddy there's nobody in git i keep forgetting that just a bunch of stuff this string of things is then transmitted into from the layer seven like the application layer into layer four and based on that based on the maximum transmission unit of your network it will be broken down into maximum segment sizes so into small segments based on that size that size is around 1400 bytes give or take you no know? and it could be larger in, in cloud providers you know internal networks so this 1400 bytes so your string that request it will be broken into 1400 segments and the last one will be obviously smaller based on whatever remains so these segments are ordered labeled sequenced you know and then sent you know? and 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 they are placed in ip packets you know and these ip packets are sent through the internet destined to the destination ip address from you as the source ip address as a client and and as they travel the router look at these ip packets and try the best effort to take it to the shortest path the best path you know there is no discrimination for any ip packet all ip packets are treated okay i'm gonna give you the fastest best fast and if that's what net neutrality right tries to kind of preserve here right it's like hey keep the net neutral as much as possible <laughs> it's like, like I, I don't want a uh, router start preferring certain ip packets over others right but that's a different story so that all these ip packets like i'm gonna give you the shortest path and if an ip packet number one which carries your first segment again four or five or seven segments are belonging to one request if one ip packet might take one route the route that can get congested meanwhile and the second ip packet might take a different route right but they will eventually arrive out of order the tcp layer will order it and the segments will be arrived sometimes it will get lost retransmission happens congestion happens flow control i talk about all of this in my network course shameless plug network.hosseinnasser.com get a get yourself a discount coupon and uh, enjoy that course it's pretty good i think um so yeah so if that is what we mean by a request getting delivered all these segments arrive acknowledged you know by the server and then once these segments arrived they are 
we go from down to up because in the client side from we went from layer seven down to the layer four and the wires and now we go opposite from layer four to layer seven layer seven doesn't know about any segments it just needs the data back so we'll assembled obviously tls and decryption happens at the same time here decrypt the content and deliver the app and only when i get that the event on request on your node.js or on your any application you want will get fired only if those four or five segments are arrived and they are on order so that's what it means to right so request that's what it means just just delivering a request is not some hey you just sent a request get it yay there is some stuff that's happening behind the scene and we really need to understand what is happening right and talk about it so based on that once you understand how it works of course requests can be delayed like one request can be arrived before the rest of them and it depends if it's in the same tcp connection if it's in the multiple tcp connection right and if it's http2 right should be two servers from tcp head of line blocking to be three right doesn't have that you know because everything is is like ordered at the stream level but i don't want to go into that either but yeah we have this problem so yeah so the client can define the priorities here and also allows a server to hint to a downstream intermediary how its responses should be prioritized when they are forward. So it's not just a client request header field, it's also a response header field. As far as I, from this abstract, I love reading abstracts because it usually explains everything, but sometimes they leave me with more questions, right? Like here. This document defines the priority header field for communicating the initial priority in an HTTP version independent manner. That is interesting. This means that regardless of the protocol, this priority is supported. And man, I had a big question about that. But then they said, as well as HTTP2 and HTTP3 frames for reprioritizing responses. So HTTP3 and HTTP2 makes perfect sense because as a client, I'm going to use a single TCP connection for HTTP2 and I'm going to use a single quick connection for HTTP3 and I'm going to stream, you know, all my requests in single, multiplex them in a single connection and they are different stream or if each request lives in a different stream. So they all they're going to be streamed into this connection so the server has context for all these requests belong to the same client because they all kind of what is this you know it's like uh, if it's like there is a lot of you know sticks together no in arabic in arabic we call it hufna, but i don't know what's in english it's like a group of things you know it's like a stack of sticks you know it's like th they are together you know so so there's context both in http3 and http2 now how do you do this with the http1 that doesn't make any sense right you might say i'm saying why because in http1 we don't support multiple requests you know multiplexing requests into a single connection we stop doing that right because it's it's nasty that's the best, best, best way to put it. It's very nasty to do, you know? So like pipelining and all this stuff, it's just nasty. So what people do is we establish multiple TCP connection and, and we kind of demultiplex, if you will. You know, so I have all these requests and I just send them into multiple TCP connection. And so you open multiple connections to the same server as the same client. But there is no linkage between this connection and, and HTTP being stateless saves us here, right? Because it doesn't matter. It's like, hey, yeah, there is no context. Who cares? Just, just send me that stuff. Send me information 
with every request so I can link those, right? And that's what they actually rely on. When I scrolled all the way, let, let's, let's go. There is exactly a paragraph addressing my concerns. See, this is what I'm, I'm talking about. And I'm pretty sure there are other stuff, you know, that I, I never thought of and they did, you know, but this is it. Let's read through this and, and then end the podcast. How about that? Um, HTTP 1X backends. It is common for content delivery network infrastructure to support different HTTP versions on the front end and the back end. Right, um, it makes sense, right? Because uh, CDNs like Cloudflare or Fastly, they want the front end to be as fast as possible. You know, let's support HTTP three or HTTP two, but the back end they cannot control because the back end is you, as a back end engineer, right? You might support HTTP one or two or just one, right? It's whatever version you support, right? They can't force you to upgrade, so they have to right, support multiple versions. So they are a server, the CDN that is, they are a server for HTTP 3 and HTTP 2 on the front end, and they can be a client of HTTP 1 to your backend, that is HTTP 1 on the backend. So what do they do in this case? Let's read. For instance, the client-facing edge edge right here the edge means the the cdn edge right side might support http 2 and http 3 while communication to backend server is done using http 1 so that's just an example it doesn't have to be http 1 no but it it could be right so unlike connection coalescing i don't know what that means to be honest right need to read more about it the CDN will demux, will demultiplex effectively, request into discrete connections. Like this is what we, when I talked about uh, multi, multi-path TCP, right? The idea of demultiplexing is being very popular right now. So you demultiplex stuff. So you have one pipe and it becomes multiple pipes, you know? So this is what, the same thing. You have one HTTP three connection or one HTTP two connection right with multiple requests but then demuxes right am i doing this right demuxes into multiple tcp connection because the problem we mentioned with HTTP one right has to be multiple connections response multiplexing in single connection is not supported by http one or older we talked about that right response multiplexing i could doesn't that also apply to request multiplexing? I, I would, yes. It's not just a response. You can't even request multiplexing is not supported because of the pipelining problem, right? Which we, I think, no longer support, right? Yeah, I would, I would, I would, I would guess this is both response and request. I would make that suggestion or correction, or correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. So there is no a fairness problem, right? However, backend servers may still use client headers for request scheduling. So how? So if you ha if I have multiple HTTP connections, how do I link them to each other so that be they belong to the same client, right? So here's here it comes. Backend servers should only schedule based on client priority information, where that information is can be scoped to an individual end client right so you should really schedule because you're gonna have priorities from different clients what what is a client here it's so you all these requests are coming from different clients as as you can you can think of it as the ip address this the originating rp address all of that's not necessarily a good idea because the CDN might use a different IP address, right? So to represent multiple clients, so that's not a good idea. But uh, that's that's what it is. Authentication and other session information might provide this linkability. So this is this is where they kind of hit it on the head here. 
So if you want to make sense of these multiple connections and, and kind of prioritize multiple requests across multiple HTTP 1.1, then use something on the back end. You are responsible to link them. How? I thought I'm not, as a backend engineer, uh, my guess here, this will be implemented as the HTTP server responsibility. I shouldn't be doing anything. Now, how would the backend engineer or the, the library or the web server, you know, daemon, if you will, would know how, what is a session or was an authorization or the cookie how does it can't trust anything uh, this seems to me like over engineering in my opinion right this section i know i i'm i'm not I'm not suggesting anything but we're just talking here right i just obviously <laughs> i could be wrong with anything i say but i think this is a little bit Yikesy. It's just very hard to implement. You know, it's just like how? To me, yeah, it could be implemented, but it seems like very complicated and, and, and uh, over engineering. If, uh, if it was me, I was just like, hey, no support for priorities for HTTP 1.1. If you want priorities, use HTTP 2 or 3, and you have to use it all the way. But I understand, obviously, they talked about all of this. This uh, may have been there for years, right? So not criticizing or anything like that. So they, meaning Locus here specifically and Cloudflare and Fastly, they talked this through in details. They're way smarter than me, obviously. And they thought about all these ideas and they said, okay, maybe we can't just support half a protocol. You know, it's just, if there's a priority, how do you control all the intermediaries? It's just, it's just very interesting. And, and, and what I would end it here, guys. So I would end it, guys. I would end this show by saying that I absolutely enjoy reading these RFCs because, uh, first of all, it addresses problems that I didn't know even existed, <laughs> you know, like this. I never had this problem. You know, it's like having to prioritize you know requests right well that's a good idea if you think about it right because if i would prioritize something i would just delay it which is not great for performance right, right. Uh, you would synchronously delay something you would send a request and then uh, make it dependent on each other if you want two requests to be independent of each other you know you would send the first request and you wait don't send the second one once you get a response send the second one but that is so slow. Now come think about it, right? This RFC opened my eye. And how did I know about it? LinkedIn randomly. Um, I believe if I'm mistaken, uh, Daniel Stamberg, the creator of Curl, liked the RFC from Lucas and I followed Lucas and then uh, in LinkedIn and I, I saw this, I was like, oh, this is really interesting stuff. Yeah, it's just a lot of you ask me guys, like, how do you keep, you know, increasing your knowledge, how to learn, what books to read? To be honest with you, I don't read books anymore. It's like, it's like, yeah, if I want to learn like Linux, I would, I, I, I buy the Linux book Bible, for example, and I go through it, you know from time to time, it's like to know how to uh, partition a drive, or what is what is a swap, you know, things like that. But for things like that, if you, if you want to increase your knowledge, I love reading RFCs, man. I just just absolutely love it because books go out of date. It's like, what, what are you going to learn books? Like, this is cutting edge stuff that what we're discussing right here. That this, these are problems that maybe have been discussed before, I never heard about them before, but this is to me, this is fresh. This is new. This is now, right? And and uh, I, I just love reading the RFCs. And uh, to be honest, it, it was reading the RFCs was not easy. You know, in the beginning, when I started doing this like six, seven years ago, actually making content and trying to be better you know as be a better software engineer reading the RFCs was so difficult because i didn't understand anything 
you know, and a lot of you might have the same problems. Like reading FCC is so complex because there is an internal assumption that you know stuff. And if you don't, like they say scheduling the connect method, if you don't know what a connect method is, right, you'll be get lost. But that's what it, where, you know, collateral knowledge comes into the equation. I spent a lot of years, you know, just uh, uh, stumbling up, reading something and then uh, hitting a wall. So, oh, what is this? And then go into a, like a depth burst algorithm. Go, uh, go learn and then go back to the thing I wanted to learn and then hit another thing and go learn that and then come back. So it's just like, now I have a little bit of a knowledge, you know, but I think it's still a little bit of shallow. I try to dig as deep as possible. But that, yeah, uh, I, re I really suggest uh, RFCs is great knowledge, you know, going back and just read the original HTTP RFC the 1996 one just so beautiful you know how people how 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 what are the original problems they try to solve and how ch everything changes now yeah guys uh, i'm gonna leave it at that uh, it was a look a little bit of a long show but it's a podcast so yeah talk to you later